Oh, all right, here we go. Here you are, hot mic. Uh, welcome on board, everybody, to the change of command ceremony from Expedition uh, 34 to the 35 crew. Uh, we uh, have just finished up the day, and tomorrow uh, the 32S crew, myself and uh, Oleg and Yevgeny, will end dock and fly home, and the actual beginning of Expedition 35 will begin uh, precisely at uh, separation. And uh, so that we can concentrate tonight and tomorrow on our duties and get ready to go home, uh, we will um, go ahead and do the change of command tonight. And uh, Colonel Chris Hadfield here will officially be in command of the International Space Station, assuming he accepts uh, the obligations tonight when I offer them to him. Before I get started, though, with the change of command proper, I want to say just a quick thank you uh, to the people on the ground who make this all happen. This space station is a, is a ground effort. It's, it's tens and tens of thousands of people that make it happen. We are very fortunate to be up here as the crew and get to enjoy the fruits of all that labor, to, uh, to be at the, at the pointy end, if you will, and uh, get to be here on the final frontier. But you are all here with us on, on the final frontier. Um, in many ways, this isn't really our expedition. It's the expedition of a group of people on the ground um, who begin planning for this kind of thing many, many years in advance, exactly what we'll be doing out here and when we're here. And uh, I was hearing the, the, the kind of the curricula uh, two and a half, three years ago, and it's amazing how it materialized and the things that we did on board, station upgrades and the science we did matched up with what we planned to do. And the increment manager is the person who puts that whole strategy together, and ours was Susan Brand. And so this is really her increment, and we were very proud to serve her. The person then who takes all of that, uh, those tasks that's decided on by the station program and the increment manager and makes it all happen is the uh, lead flight director, Chris Edelin. And uh, thank you so much uh, to, to him as well. When we end dock tomorrow night, his duties uh, as part of Expedition 34 will relax a bit too. We, we all have more duties uh, after, after the expedition as they go on. But certainly, uh, the time of the expedition will come to an end for him, too. And I'm sure he'll be, breathe a big sigh of relief and be very proud about, uh, about the way the ground has executed it. And we work together as a team. And then the one person, there is one more person I really want to thank. And uh, we have to understand what it is we're doing up here. We have to understand what the scientists want. We have to understand uh, the constraints, the engineering limitations on all this stuff. Uh, a space station is, a, is an extremely complicated thing. Uh, I'm sure most of you appreciate that who are watching. But um, the person who brings that all together and translates it into something a crew can understand decides what we should train on is Kathy Bull. She was our station training lead for increment 34. And she just put it all together for us. She is our closest point of contact to all those things uh, that we've done here. So I really, I really want to thank them. I know this has been a hugely successful increment for them, too, on the ground, working through with the, any of the setbacks we've had and making new plans and putting together the weekly plan and the daily plans, too. It's just very complicated. What we do inside is only a very small part of actually what's happening on the space station. There are many, many things going on outside the space station, too, that the crew doesn't even interact with. Some of the constraints we have on board come from those things that are going on outside, too. So it was really a brilliant piece of work putting the whole expedition together, and thank you to those people. And so now I want to uh, move on to the, the change of command and uh, give uh, Chris, some, Chris some time to talk here, too. Um, the, the change of command happens four times a year, and it's kind of a sign that, uh, that we've moved on to new objectives and everything, and so Chris is ready to take those on. He has a vision for 35. He knows what's going to happen. I'm not even trained on what, what's going to happen in 35, probably, so it's kind of good that uh, it's time for me to, to head on home with Oleg and Yevgeny and hand it on to these guys, to Chris, Tom, and Roman, and they can wel welcome on board uh, Sasha Pavel and Chris Cassidy so that they can get on with uh, Expedition 35 very soon. So um, with that, um, I'm going to uh, start to just talk a little bit about the, uh, the, the change of command itself. Um, as, as it happens today, after this, uh, like I said, we'll, we'll start relaxing and uh, a little bit, getting ready for the, the big trip home. Uh, my commander has always been, as far as the Soyuz was concerned, Oleg. And uh, I want to say a word about Oleg and Yevgeny. Um, those guys uh, I didn't really know before I began the training for the expedition. As soon as you know who you're assigned to fly with, you start to look, uh, look and, and find out all you can about them. And we have uh, cosmonauts who come and be DOHs and got a chance to, to learn about them and know them that way 
Uh, they they worked uh, in Houston with us, and uh, I tell you, they're like brothers to me. They they say they consider me like their papa, which uh, I'm not sure how to take that. I feel like a brother to them, honestly. So, but uh, we're very close, and uh, it's just been an extreme pleasure to fly with them. They're fantastic in the Soyuz. Uh, they they're the guys that should go to Mars, uh, and uh, I'll probably be in an armchair watching them because they're much younger than me. But uh, they they are fantastic. Uh, cosmonauts, and it's been just an extreme, extreme pleasure to fly with them. And uh, the other two crewmates here, before we get to Chris, uh, Ramon and Tom, Tom's been doing some fantastic science up here. He has a vision of what a doctor should do in space. He gives us advice in, at night at dinner time and explains things to us that really makes, uh, makes a big picture uh, complete for us about some of the stuff we do up here. And then uh, Roman, uh, I flew with actually when I flew before he was up here on STS uh, 120. When I came up for STS 128, he was already here. He's just also a fantastic, fantastic crewmate. Always, uh, he's very experienced, uh, the most experienced of us. So he just brings a lot to the table, and it's been a pleasure to, to fly with him too. And of course, uh, Chris here is uh, is he brings also some super super special talents to the table. And I'm not going to go through them all because you know what they are. Uh, he, he's, really, he's really a people person. He's out there. He shares things with everybody. He has, he has a way to make time for all that stuff. He's, he's a uniquely talented person on the planet and now a uniquely talented person off the planet. One of the things uh, Chris loves is music, and I decided to play just a short song tonight. He doesn't know what it is, uh -huh. and he didn't approve it. I'm, I'm solely responsible, so I should get the credit and the blame if it doesn't go well. But, Tom, if you'll roll the music, and then I'll tell you why, uh, why I wanted to play the song. Okay, and uh, that's, of course, because um, we're very proud. We're very proud of Chris. Uh, we're very proud of Canada as our partner in this International Space Station. Um, we're really proud, uh, most of all, that the space station is such a fantastic example of international cooperation. It's not a competition. It's about 15 of the most affluent countries in the, on the planet coming together and doing something really special for the future. And so that's, uh, that's why... Um, it's not only great for the, for the children of the future that we're doing it for, for science and for advancement, but it's also great that we've come together and done this international cooperation thing. And uh, Canada's made a co great contribution, just like so many of the other partners have. Everybody has a part to play, and uh, it's because of that inter uh, inter international um, contribution that's being made and because Canada is a, is a primary partner that uh, it's a pleasure to... Uh, offer the chance to command the space station to our international partners. And Kev, uh, Chris will be the, uh, the second international commander of the space station. And um, he's, he's well deserving of the honor, of course. And uh, it's going to be just really fantastic for the whole program uh, as a community to have him as the commander of the International Space Station. So with that, I'm going to hand, uh, hand the mic over to Chris a minute. I hope he doesn't have to talk as long as I do. But he always has good things to say, so it will be a pleasure if he does. 
Kevin, thank you. You do me a tremendous honor by playing that song for me and my country. Thank you very much. Uh, Evgeny and Oleg and Kevin, you were uh, just everything that could possibly be when we showed up at this space station here. You uh, showed us how to live in space and how to live on the space station. We learned so much technically from you. Uh, you've been great just friends the whole time up here. Really good people to be in space with. And, and even most importantly, learning about leadership from you, Kevin, how to run this place, uh, the incredible luck and richness of time to watch how you make this place work so well. In our time here, we set a record for the amount of science done in a given length of time. Uh, the space station is humming with hundreds of experiments. Uh, it's a very healthy spaceship uh, because of the work that you all put in. And so uh, it's a tremendous gift to give. It's a huge honor and a privilege for me but also for all the people at the Canadian Space Agency, all of my hardworking uh, co-workers at the Canadian Space Agency, and for my entire country. So for the International Space Station program, all the international partners, thank you very much for, um, for giving me the, uh, the keys to the family car. Um, we're gonna put some miles on it, but uh, we'll, we'll bring it back in good shape. And uh, I would really like to wish your crew, thank your crew, uh, but wish you uh, soft landings. Thank you very much. With that, Chris, it's time for me to offer you command of the International Space Station. Thank you, Kevin. With, uh, with great humility and pleasure, I accept command of the International Space Station. Thank you, sir. There you go. Good boy. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. And congratulations, guys. Kevin, on behalf of the Increment 34 team, we just want to thank you for your outstanding leadership and support, your amazing attitude and ability to work so well with the ground teams around the world has resulted in a truly historical increment, and we look forward to hearing all about your experiences upon your return. And for Chris, congratulations on becoming the first Canadian commander of the International Space Station. We look forward to working with you as you take command and you lead the crew through Increment 35. Everyone here in Houston and around the world, even the Queen of England herself, sends their best to you and your crew. Congratulations. Thank you, Kathy. Great words. I look forward to getting home and sharing it all with you uh, with great pleasure. I'll see you soon. Take care.